So before we start, I do have two comments I just can't help making. Polynomial long division, we do not usually go to that trouble if the divisor is a monomial. Instead, we just work term by term. We can rewrite that as each one of these terms is being divided by 2x. Kind of like the distributive property of division. And then we simplify each one of these terms. So this one would just become x over 2. This one would just become a 3. And this one would just be negative 6 over x. Pretty simple. But that's only because we were dividing by one term. Another thing, division has gotten written many different ways. This is the fractional form, same as above which we'll be investigating a lot very soon. Also, what is nice to use if you're trying to type is just to write everything horizontally. And this is kind of the order that we put things in calculators. But if you do that, you must remember to do the parentheses. You must remember that it's the whole numerator being divided by the entire denominator. Another way that it's pretty old fashioned, but it's the way we're going to do today. We take the divisor, it's on the outside. The dividend, the part that's being divided into, goes underneath the division bar. So just some little reminders before we actually start. So I guess we can't put it off any longer. It's time to start dividing. I'll take you to a little backwards in time, maybe to about fourth grade. If we could try, please, 52 divided into 2,971. Well, we can't divide 52 into 2. We can't divide 52 into 29. We can't divide 52 into 297. And that's where the first part of our answer is going to go. Right over that 7. So to, rather than doing this all in a lump, we just take the 5 and the 29. About how many times will 5 divide into 29? That won't go evenly, but I'm guessing about 5. Now, sometimes our first guess is too large, but I'm going to put the 5 up here where we said it should go, over the 7. And then the next thing we do is we multiply 5 times the entire 52. Not just the 5, but the entire 52. So 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 5 plus the 1 is 26. And that's not hard. The next step, though, is to subtract. After we've multiplied times the entire divisor, we subtract. So we should get 37. And then we bring down the next number and keep dividing. So now we'll be taking 52 into 371. To figure out how many times that is, we try the 5 into the 37, which I believe is going to be 7. If it's too big, we'll drop down and try a 6. So 7 times 2 is 14. Carry the 1. This would be a 36. And once again, we subtract. We have 7 left over. No more numbers to bring down. We're not going to do 0, 0.0 or anything. So the 7 is the remainder. Now that's 7 out of 52. So sometimes we wrote that remainder as a fraction, 57 and 7 50 seconds, part of the way towards the next number. Well, that's pretty much how we're going to do these guys. First of all, I'm going to write it in the long division format.
and we have to check and make sure that we have everything in standard form, the powers are going down, and that we're not missing any place values. So we've got x squareds, plain old x's, constant. Plain x's, constant. They're in order. Nobody's missing. We can just go ahead and write the problem. Okay. Well, these two terms cannot divide into one term. We're going to take these two terms into these two terms, so our first answer is going to go up above the negative 2x. To figure out what that first answer is, we're going to divide the x here into the x squared there. Just like up here, we took the 5 into 29 to guess how many times it goes. So what do you multiply times x to get x squared? I'm thinking it's going to be just x. So that's what I'm going to put here, right where we said to put it. And now, just like we didn't take 5 times 5, we took 5 times the entire 52, we've got to take this x times the entire x minus 9. x times x, x times negative 9. And then the next step is key. Just as we did above, we are going to subtract. And I really wish you would put parentheses around it. It might save you from making a mistake. So x squared minus x squared, they zero out, and they should. If this first term doesn't cancel out when you subtract, something's wrong. And then negative 2x, subtract negative 9x. Well, subtracting a negative is the same as adding. So this is really like negative 2x plus 9x, which would be 7x. Bring down the next term. And keep dividing. So this time we'd be taking the x into the first term we've got now, the 7x. What do you multiply times x to get 7x? Obviously it's 7. And because it's a positive 7, we write plus 7. And then we multiply this positive 7 times the entire divisor. So we have 7x minus 63. And we subtract. Well, 7x minus 7x, they zero out like they're supposed to. Negative 63, subtract negative 63. It would be negative 63 plus 63. So the remainder is zero. Now, because this divided evenly without a remainder, that means x minus 9 has to be a factor. And in fact, x plus 7 must also be a factor. And I know a lot of you could have just looked at this one and factored it as x minus 9 times x plus 7. So let's try the next one. They're not x's, but it's okay. Our divisor is a plus 3. We have a squared, plain old a's, constant a. We're not missing any terms. So we're going to take these two terms into these two terms. The first answer is going to go over the 4a. So before I messed it up, what do you multiply times a to get a squared? Now that's just a, and it's going to go right here, where we've said it should go. And now the a is going to have to be multiplied times this divisor. So a times a a times a positive 3, and then we subtract. We subtract this whole thing. So the a squareds cancel out like they're supposed to, and then 4a subtract 3a should just be 1a. 
bring down the next term and keep dividing. So we'll multiply times a to get 1a. It's not much, but it would be a positive 1. And now that positive 1 is going to get multiplied times this whole divisor. 1 times a, 1 times 3, and then we subtract both of those. As hoped for, the a's do cancel out. And then 8 subtract 3 is 5. Since there was a remainder, a plus 3 isn't a factor. And neither is a plus 1. And usually, at this level, we are going to write this as a fraction. Because the remainder was a positive 5, we'll put plus 5 over a plus 3. And that entire thing will be our quotient. Oh, this one's fancy. It's not just x or a, it's 2 times the variable. Do we have all the parts that we need? Are they in descending order, and do they include all the powers? Actually, yes, it looks like they do. So just go ahead. Crank it out. We have two terms into two terms, so the first answer is going to go here. What do we multiply times 2n to make 6n to the second? Well, we need a 3 and we need an n. So the 3n is going to go up there. And then we multiply that times the divisor. So 3n times 2n. 3n times negative 1. And subtract this whole thing. All the 6n squares cancel out as they're supposed to. Negative 5n subtract negative 3n is the same as negative 5n plus 3n, which would be a 2n. Bring down the next term and keep dividing. So, what do we multiply times 2n to get 2n? That'll be a 1, and it'll be a positive 1, so I'm going to put plus 1 up here. And we just multiply that positive 1 times both of those. And subtract. So 2n minus 2n, they cancel out. Negative 7 subtract negative 1 is the same as negative 7 plus 1. So we have 8. Noth nothing else to bring down. So that's our remainder. It means this thing's not a factor. And because it was a positive 8, we're going to write it as plus 8 over 2n minus 1. Well, there's just one more on this page. So we're going to do the k minus 4. And then we have these things in descending order, but not in complete order. We have k to the third, and then we skip down to plain old k. There should be a k squared in here somewhere, and it's missing. So we're going to fake it in by putting in a 0, which makes it look like OK, I know, but so when we write this problem out, we're going to put the k to the third plus 0 k squared, and then the minus 6k, and then the plus 1. We need to fill in that place value. Now we can divide. So we'll be taking two terms into two terms. Our first answer should go over that 0 k squared. 
So what should we multiply times k to get k to the third? I'm thinking that's going to be k to the second. And now k to the second gets multiplied times the whole divisor. k squared times k. k squared times negative 4. Negative 4k squared. And subtract. More people make mistakes in the subtraction than any other part of this process. Even back in fourth grade, more students make mistakes in the subtraction rather than the multiplication and division. So the k cubes cancel out. I'm not trying to be negative about this. I just want you to be careful. And we have 0 minus negative 4k squared. Well, that's like 0 plus 4k squared. Bring down the next term. And keep dividing. So what do you multiply times k to get 4k to the second? I think that it'd have to be 4k. And it's a positive 4k, so I'm going to put plus 4k. And they're going to line up right over the k's. And then we multiply that positive 4k times the divisor. So we'd have 4k to the second. And 4k times a negative 4 is going to be negative 16k. And then we have to subtract. Well, the 4k squared, 4k squares cancel out. And we have negative 6k, subtract a negative 16k. So that'd be negative 6k plus 16k. So we'd end up with 10k here. Oh, and there's still another term, plus 1. And keep dividing. So... What do we multiply times k to get 10k? I'm guessing it's a 10. And it's a positive 10, so I'm going to put a plus 10 up here. And then 10 times the entire k minus 4. It'll be a minus 40. But we're going to subtract both of those. So 10k minus 10k, they cancel out. And 1 minus a negative 40 is like 1 plus 40. So that would be our remainder. It's a positive 41, so we can write plus 41 over k minus 4 as our fraction. So it looks terrible, but it's not too hard. <laughs>